good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Valery Balian, on the question of the Armenians of Western Armenia, UK urges to refrain from politicizing ICRC support. The newly discovered code of the Tatev Monastery, which must be read from right to left, and with the aid of a mirror, Jerusalem's famous art from the return to Armenia, Open Sambo Championship held in Stepanagert. Let's support Western Armenian television. Born in 1956 on December 19 in the town of Stepanaget, from 1964 to 1974, he studied at Stepanaget Secondary School No. 3. From 1974 to 1979, he studied at the Yerevan Polytechnic Institute, Department of Computer Technology, and qualified as a system engineer. From 1980 to 1990, he worked as a measurement engineer at the Stepanaget Communications Operations Department, a site control engineer at the Capacitor Plan, and senior workshop manager, a distribution engineer at the Building Materials plant and an energy engineer at the water management department. He was actively involved in the Artsakh National Liberation Movement. From 1989 to 1990, he took part in the activities of the Amara Charity Association. In 1990, he led clandestine activities in the armed struggle of the Artsakh Liberation Movement. He served as the head of intelligence at the Struggle Central Headquarters and was also a member of the Coordinating Council attached to the headquarters. In the same year, he joined the ranks of the ARF, Armenian Revolutionary Federation and was appointed by the Artsakh Central Committee to be in charge of combat operations, organizing and coordinating the activities of armed detachments throughout the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. He was also a member of the Bertazur Self-Defense Council. On December 28, 1990, he was elected as a deputy of the Supreme Council of the First Convocation in Artsakh from constituency number 12 of Stepanagert. He served as the chairman of the Standing Committee on Defense and Security. Those who have been to Matanadaran and looked at the pages of the handwritten books have undoubtedly marveled at the beauty of the miniatures. So you look at the miniatures and feel as if they've just been painted. The colors are so vivid, so appealing. It's the phenomenon of the scarlet, never aging and unable to lose its beauty. These 12 mm worms have brought great renown to Armenia, unknown to many since antiquity. The ancient red that has become Armenia's trademarks is now unfortunately threatened with destruction. Of course, we have all heard of the miracle die against which time is powerless. But what do we know? When did Armenians start using it? What has been preserved in the pages of Vermilion? History, why have the once magical dying traditions been forgotten? And what are we doing to protect Vermilion? There are only three types of these insects in the world, Armenian, Mexican and Polish, which are widespread in Western and Eastern Europe. The scarlet from listed in the Red Book of Armenia, or as many call it, the Ararat scarlet worm, is a small insect that breeds in in the territory of the Ararat Valley. It is considered an endemic species of this region. They feed on just two types of plant. These are wormwood and reed. At all stages of development, the worms are red in color due to the presence of carmine in their bodies. From September to March, scarlet wormwood is in the soil. They hibernate for around seven months. The scarlet worm produces only one generation per year. So after a long hibernation under the ground, the elongated caterpillars hatch from their eggs in spring. Their final formation doesn't take place until early September. This is when they reproduce. By the way, the males die after mating and the females return to underground to lay eggs. It's during this period that the female worms must be harvested to obtain the famous red dye. Up to 40 kg of worms can be harvested from hectare of salt and 150 to 175 red vortam worms are needed to obtain 1 gram of red color. According to Armen Press, the British Embassy in Armenia issued a statement on the activities of the International Committee of the Red Cross in the South Caucasus. For years, the International Committee of the Red Cross has carried out extremely important work in the South Caucasus, including on the Berzo route, where its efforts helped the local population gain access to essential goods and services, including life-saving medicines and health services. The UK government strongly supports the ongoing work and activities of the International Committee of Red Cross. The UK calls on all parties to refrain from politicizing humanitarian aid, the statement said. The government of Western Armenia welcomes the statement by the UK Embassy in Armenia. With this statement, international structures once again underline the arrogant policy of the Baku authorities, which ignores all possible international standards. The Red Cross vehicles continue to carry out humanitarian activities even in the war zone. We condemn and will continue to condemn Baku's murderous policy and reiterate that nothing goes unanswered. And the 
time for retribution is not far behind. The European Court of Human Rights has already accepted the applications of forcibly displaced persons from Shushi, in which they authorized the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Armena Gabrahamian, to represent and defend their interests before the European Court of Human Rights. Recently, the article, the newly discovered quote from the Tatev Monastery by Arsen Harutunyan, a lithographer and candidate in historical science, was published. The article presented a three-part inscription recently discovered at the Tatev Monastery, which contents of which until now have remained illegible. A coded inscription was preserved on the southern outer wall of the main church of the St. Paul's Petros Monastery in Tatev. At some point, certain specialists attempted to decipher the content of the inscription, but the work was done partially and incompletely. Several circumstances hampered the reading of the inscription, such as its high location, obscurity due to humidity, and the circular mirror writing style. Recently, the lithography expert Arsen Harutunya succeeded in deciphering the inscription with the help of high-quality photos. It became clear that it was written from right to left and in a circular mirror writing style. The triple inscription showed that it was dedicated to three spiritual fathers, Father Anton, Father Stepano, and Father Giragos. Additionally, the names Kolichan and Tarin were also read here, along with the date of the inscription. According to the author, the spiritual fathers mentioned in the inscription were visitor donors who visited the Tate monastery and made certain donations. In exchange, they were commemorated on the church walls. Apparently, the text was coded at the request of the donors who sought to keep their identity secret. As the author noticed in his article, encryption or cryptography has deep roots in Armenian and world written cultural heritage. The basis of this phenomenon known internationally as cryptography was to keep various facts and names secret and confidential, protecting them from the cruelty of ignorant people and passing them on to future generations. Armenian cryptography as a distinct scientific branch has attracted the attention of Armenian and foreign researchers since the 90s and 20th centuries. In circular cryptography, the letters are represented in an inverted manner, mainly mirrored, so that they can be read from right to left. According to researchers Agayan and Abrahamian, decoding such a cipher is possible and easy using methods such as reflecting the writing in a mirror or copying it onto transparent paper and deciphering it by holding it up to the light. Incidentally, other examples of circular ciphers are also known from Armenian lithographs. Similar inscriptions have been found in the village of Kurtan in the Lori region, the monasteries of Tanahat and Sevanavang, the village of Lichki in the Gegarkunik region, and so on. After a century of artistic evolution in the Middle East, the famous ceramic art of Jerusalem Armenians may soon be produced in Armenia for the first time. Armenian survivors of the Turkish massacres established two separate workshops in the Jerusalem in 1922, specializing in tiles and pottery. They gradually developed their own artistic style without the restrictions they faced under Ottoman rule. The fame of Armenian artists spread beyond Jerusalem borders. Today, the unique works of this workshop are presented as gifts to royal families families, high-ranking delegations and presidents, and exported worldwide. In 1992, the Smithsonian Museum in Washington also organized a special months-long exhibition, Armenian Ceramics from Jerusalem. Several other world-renowned museums, including the British Victoria and Albert Museum, also hold examples of Armenian pottery from Jerusalem. This type of art has become a symbol of Jerusalem, said Rag Balayan told RFERL at his family's Balayan Armenian Ceramics of Jerusalem factory, which is great grandfather founded after the genocide against Armenians. The wood factory is one of the oldest continuously operating businesses in Jerusalem. The blue and white tiles manufactured in Jerusalem are often used to decorate luxury swimming pools in California. Now the Balian family is preparing to become the first of Jerusalem's Armenian potters to return to Armenia. Balian declines to specify specific deities but says the family is planning a factory museum and cafe all in one. According to an Artsakh press correspondent, the championship was organized by the Artsakh Sambo Federation. Azad Andaryan, an international referee and honored Sambo coach, stated that 151 athletes in 17 different weight categories from the Stepanaget and Martuni regions took part in the Open Championship. The athletes participated in the championship at a fairly high level. As we couldn't take part in the Asian Championship due to the blockade, we decided to hold it here. Since 1997, our athletes have 
not been able to participate in the European and World Championships, said Andarian. The winners of the Open Championship were rewarded by the Federation with certificates, diplomas and cash prizes. This sporting event was attended by Karen Sarkisian, the Minister of the Interior of the Republic of Armenia, who received a letter of appreciation from the Sambo Federation for his contribution to the development of Sambo in Artsakh. Western Armenia Television, true to its principles and its viewers, continues its uninterrupted work with new approaches. As you already know, our television does not engage in self-promotion. It broadcasts mainly political and other contexts related to the history, present and future of Western Armenia, as well as information raising various issues. We also present the political transition of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, the government, the National Assembly and other structures in a transparent and accessible way. Dear compatriots, with your support, the possibilities of of our television will be further expanded and strengthened. We are strong together. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> Kaçer <laughs> <laughs> 